Hello everybody, what's up, how you doing? Welcome to the restart of the Pac-Man series, now in Game Maker Studio 2. Meaning that we'll try to recreate the game from start to finish using Game Maker Language. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the classic grid-based movement and how to implement it. So without further ado, let's get it away. I have an almost blank project file in front of me, which you can find in the description if you want to follow along step by step. Inside it, there's this Pac-Man sprite by the name of SPR underscore player and a room with the name Iron Man Skull Base. The only important thing about the sprite is the size, as we'll be making a grid with a size of 32 pixels. Room settings have been changed so that the width and height is set to 608 by 704. Will be more important when we start making the map. And also change the background color to what you see in front of you. With that out of the way, we can start by creating an object. Right click object, create object, which we'll call OBJ player. We'll give it the player sprite that we already created, add an event, create event, and name it initialize variables. In here, we want to initialize the movement variable for the movement code that we'll be creating. So, in the movement code, we will need a few different variables. We will need a check to see if we're currently moving, a variable for how big the grid is and subsequently how far we're supposed to move between each grid space, a variable for how fast you move between grid spaces, a counter to figure out what when we're done moving, and finally, a variable to hold the direction the object is going to move in. We also need variables to hold our current horizontal and vertical speed. Altogether, it will be something along the lines of this. Just remember that move distance uh, divided by move speed needs to be an, a whole number. Otherwise, we won't be able to do the proper collision further in the video. Now, to create a step event. We will need variables to check for each key press that we want for movement, but it's either for arrow keys or W A S D. In this project, we'll use both to show how you could do either of them. So either check for VK left, the virtual key for left, which is arrow, or the key for A on the keyboard. Next, we check if the movement keys have been pressed and assign the object direction based on which key. The values given to move direction are important as it will determine the orientation of the sprite. We then check if the object is currently moving, not moving, shown by the exclamation mark before it is moving, and press set to seed, proceed to set me moving to true and have the counter start counting. Now we can use a switch statement within the same block to determine which direction we're planning on moving next. As an example, when the right key arrow key, or D in this example, has been pressed, we set the horizontal speed to be equal to the total move speed. Thank you. 
image angle is there to fix the orientation of the sprite, and image Y scale help the shadow of the sprite always be consistent. If you're using another sprite or a simple uh, player sprite, then this is not necessary. That will look something along the lines of this. Finally, after having set up the movement, we need to implement what happens when is moving is set to true. We want to move the object when the counter is above zero. Just remember to reduce it by the speed that the character is moving. That way, the counter reaches zero when the character has moved the full grid space. Then we increase our X and Y values with the horizontal and vertical speeds. When the counter has reached zero, we want to set is moving to false and turn our horizontal and vertical speeds to zero. To finalize everything, we need to in go into our room, click on the instances layer, and drop in our object player. If we now run the program, we can see that the character moves to the right from the beginning, being the direction that we set in the create event. The character moves constantly in 32 pixel increments in that direction until a different key direction key has been pressed, where it will decide to move in that direction instead, just as planned. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then a like and a subscribe helps me out immensely. If you have any suggestions for a future video, then don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. So until next time, have a great time, and a great day.